Hi, your friendly neighborhood meerkat is back with another list. What? List video? Don't you have other videos to make? Yes, so here's seven wrestlers that I relate to. What the heck are you talking about? Wrestlers, you know, that job where you're thrown to the ropes and for no reason run back. Seven wrestlers, you know, when you're laying on the mat, looking at your opponent, leap into the air, and go flippity 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 flippity. Seven wrestlers whose characters and actions, backstory, and their general self I relate to. For example, Mayu Iwatani, the icon, the goat, my favorite women's wrestler, and the best in the world. But she be like... <laughs> That's totally me. Speaking of Mayu, I relate greatly to her handler, the one who makes sure she doesn't trip, but it happened anyways. You had one job, Komomo. Momokogo struck me the second I saw her because she immediately gave off the vibe of a main character in a high school anime entering a new school with all these units and colorful personalities, but I relate to her immensely because of her background and of course my perceived interpretation of it. She was a film actress, but her career didn't quite work the way she wanted it to, and in her 30s, she found a new passion pro wrestling, and she entered stardom to team under the tutelage of her hero, Mayu Iwatani. I also have a film background, and that definitely didn't go my way. I wanted it to, and in my sorrows of not knowing what to do with my need to make art, and also during a period when I was done with WWE, I rediscovered a love for wrestling through my reignited passion of stardom, and rediscovered my love for writing and creation through my YouTube channel. Good old Komomo. Death, death, look at your ass. Kaiori Yoniyama is a badass and based as fuck. Why? Because many newer fans would quickly categorize Yoniyama in the same block as like Toriyanu, but have no idea that this woman was a premier Joshi who had a huge hair versus hair match with Emi Sakura that she won. She was also supposed to retire, but at the 10 bell salute went, eh. I don't want to. I don't want to. The fact that she wants to spend the latter part of her career in an easy comedy role is her right to. She's earned it, but she plays this role perfectly. Anytime you need Yoniyama in a certain role, she will always crush it. A mark of a truly great talent. But why do I relate to her? Because Fukushin Des just walks around, reads the paper, looks grumpy all the time, but wears clown paint because we clowns gotta maintain an appearance, even though all clowns are just sad on the inside. Just... just so sad. With a theme that goes like... Death, 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 death. Next is Orange Cassidy, a cross between Ryan Gosling and Drive and Bugs Bunny. I love this man and his entire philosophy toward wrestling. Why? Uh, do you think you're one of the best wrestlers in the world? No. Not even close. <laughs> I rest my case. Another wrestler whose entire philosophy is 100% my own. If you're not aware, this is Effie. Just listen to Effie talk to Lita. And people will hate this. The amount of one act plays that you have co written on the fly with people, we don't often think back and think, oh, I've written hundreds of plays. You did, though. And you wrote many different ones. And they had the same similar tropes. And you could tell that Amy wrote that play. You could tell that she was involved with that because your prince is all over it. Like, I'm sure the Undertaker's not like, think of all the dramatic moments I've created. And with Renee. Where I beat him in a match and won his soul. I won possession of his soul. And all of a sudden, the lights go out. Druids come out. I start speaking in tongues. I take his soul. Two years later, he says, I want the soul back. I do a very serious hardcore match at one of the big gay brunches in Tampa. I took his soul because if you don't have a soul, you can get a lot further in this business. I'll hang on to it for you, kid. But when he got his soul back and found that, he became kind of a more complete. So there's a seriousness in it, but there's so much stupid around it that you go, I love Effie. 100% proof you don't need the clout of a corporate company to be successful. Work from the outside instead of the inside. That's me. Sorry to be a little dramatic, but I don't know if you know this. I'm Effie. It's what I do. 
Hyper Masao is a superhero in this company that Hatman doesn't believe in, the world of TJPW. And it's not her superhero costume or even her antics. Hyper Masao had aspirations for art, but was bullied in school, so she kept her dreams to herself. Her parents were very opinionated at what she should do, and Masao never felt she was making her own decisions. She would go to college because her parents told her so, and she realized she wasn't making her own decisions. She would stop going to school, but her parents made her go back, and this increasing restriction and feeling that her body didn't belong to her is such a horrifying experience that is incredibly relatable to anyone with stricter parents or parents who are well intentioned but mess you up anyways. One of my big things in therapy was learning to have confidence in my own ability to make a decision because I am 100% this meme because my dad would make the decisions for me. Even when I made a decision myself, my parents had the better decision and would be sure to tell me that. It's why I probably frustrate my parents these days because I don't listen to a single thing they say now. But I gotta be 100% in control for me. Hyper Masao, unfortunately, felt this horrifying feeling all too much and it led to a dark moment where she attempted to take her own life. She would down a bunch of pills and sake and passed out in the graveyard. Thankfully, she was found by a passerby and sent to the hospital. But her face was swelled and they just thought she looked like a drug addict. She was ultimately shamed for her act. Her parents took on the trouble for it. And that's by far an even worse feeling. But what saved Hyper Masao's life was wrestling. She already knew she could survive it. I mean, she survived herself. The world ain't got anything on you. As she said, her life up to that point was like choosing from a menu at a family restaurant. But now, it's like a charcuterie. For the first time in her life, she made her own decision. Let me wipe away these tears and add some more because yes, Sayakamatani, the overly dramatic, super dramatic, like super duper crying phoenix crying girl, crying like la, 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 is someone who took on the role as white belt defender intensely, seriously, and personal that it drove all emotions out of her. As she would even say, she felt immature as a champion but can't help feeling the anxiety that comes with with it. Her entire arc as white belt champion was about finding her groove. That's me, 100%. I'm very passionate about the things I create and I hope that comes off. But I've often made myself tear up during commentary. Is that dramatic? Yes, but so is Saya Kamatani. I come from a dramatic film background who loves to work with actors. I am going to be dramatic. That's me, honey. That's also Saya Kamatani. Anxiety on the inside and the outside, but finding the strength to power through for that which you love. For Saya, it was the white belt, and for me, it's the art I create. I learned to love my voice. I used to hate it. I hated it. I would mumble a lot. I stuttered. I hated public speaking. But I'm sure you've noticed. I talk strange too. But I learned every nuance of my voice and how to control it and enunciate. It's made me a better speaker in general public, which gives me confidence and helps with my social anxiety. So, okay, Saya. I, I, I see why I hate you so much. Oh, so much. You are you're just me. I am looking at my soul and I immediately point and go, you deceiver. People, just maybe, just maybe, maybe I'm the deceiver after all. Stop it. No, that's not like me at all. No, I changed my mind! I changed my mind! I'm nothing like you! I'm nothing like you! Nothing! Shut up! Shut up! So that's seven wrestlers I relate to. Just seven. Only seven.
and the little demon of evil cuteness, the slacker who will spend the least amount of energy possible. This woman will earn her money doing as little as she can. This little goblin is the most relatable woman in stardom. Every service worker, stand up and go, yes. I will work as little as possible for my bag because Saki Kashima is us. What you looking at? What you what you looking at? What you looking at? What you what you looking at? I had to record this on my iPhone, so sorry for the quality. Thank you to all my Patreon sponsors. We have Jeff, the Up Channel, Geek and Norris, Dad, Anthony, Kopi, Tish, Renee, Ace, Maddox, Justin, Matthew, Neal, John, Terrence, Dan, Rook, Edward Kaczynski, Kevin Mullen, Adam K, Ray, Konoshige, Party Marty, Punk Ricks, Videos, Minus Chibakawas, Boobas, Venji, Juggernaut Graphics, Polar Bear, Shut Up, Wave, Ash, McGee, Bongo, Chicken, James, 198X, and my newest sponsors, Aaron, Zacharias, and Far. Five, two, two, two. Thank y'all. I'm fearless.